Around 6,000 asylum seekers have joined a caravan in Mexico headed to the United States. It's the largest convoy in over a year. It's all happened over the Christmas weekend. It comes as more than 35,000 migrants were apprehended at the border over that holiday weekend. It's just hard to believe. It's all happening. As top US officials uh, are going to be visiting Mexico City tomorrow. Let's bring in Sky News contributor Kosha Gata, who knows a lot about this sort of stuff. I mean, Kosha, the poll numbers out of the United States show that President Biden's immigration policy has failed. Uh, does this trip to Mexico City signal that the Biden administration has finally woken up to the reality? Great to be with you, Gary. I think it signals that uh, the administration has woken up to the optics, maybe not the, re the reality, because the poll yeah. numbers, as you mentioned, have been plummeting. Uh, this is an issue where 70 percent of Americans, based on the real clear politics average poll of polls, uh, disapproves of his handling of the border. Uh, and also in this day and age of social media that we live in, that imagery, such as you're playing right now, uh, comes through everybody's phone feeds. We see it. And it's trickling through into everyday life of people, not just in the border states, but also in North as they're getting bussed up and, and shipped up. So this is definitely at his doorstep. But the reason I say I don't think it's signaling uh, waking up to reality is because reality would look like actually taking action and not visits and speeches. And I think that, you know, the time for that has long passed. Action would be fortifying the border, putting the military there, um, bringing back those policies that were previously in place, such as remain in Mexico, tightening up the asylum racket and all the rest of it. Uh, if they want to do it, they can do it. It requires political will. And both parties for decades have not shown that they have it. And you, you realise that with social media influencers doing live streaming as they're crossing the border, and people in America are rightly worried about just exactly who's coming and the terms under which they're coming. How important is this issue going to be in the 2024 election? Right up there, I'd reckon. You would think so, because the fundamental role of government is keeping the homeland safe. And the border is, you know, the definition of keeping yeah. the homeland safe. And in a, in a normal cycle, you would think it would. The issue is, I think gone are the days of a normal election cycle where issues and policies and the candidates actually matter. And we've moved into uh, this era of systems-based elections, where it's all about who's better at navigating and wielding the system of turning out the vote, uh, of mm -hmm. navigating, you know, mass mail-in balloting, which is now the norm in many states, of being able to leverage the judicial system uh, and putting the whole weight of that against the leading candidate of the other side, as is happening right now. So people kind of who are very good, the party that's better at navigating, leveraging all of those tactics, which often seems to be the Democrat Party. They're just very savvy at that. You, you would think that even in the wake of this kind of an issue, they actually um, you know, might just pull it out again, as we see them doing again and again, even though policies are very unpopular. Yeah, I, I, I think you're onto something there. But I'd reckon you know, in a normal election cycle, Joe Biden would probably look for a distraction. He's now ordering international airstrikes. It's some sort of a distraction for this border crisis. Uh, I mean, I was watching people crossing at Eagle Pass, Texas. There you go. It's not hard, is it? 6,000 in sort of one day. Extraordinary stuff. Uh, I mean, what, look, while we're on the topic, um, you know, what do you make of these uh, repeated attacks on US troops from Iranian-backed groups that have triggered... Biden's decision now to order these airstrikes. Yeah, you know, I think you're right that um, pointing to a, a foreign foe is a time-tested and, and trusty strategy for distracting away from poor yeah. performance domestically. So there's something in that for sure. Um, I think it also reminds people of how um, in a weekend, in the wake of a weakened America, Iran is stronger and is emboldened. And, you know, some of the policies that this administration and the previous one did, you know, the famous plane loads of cash and all that stuff went in there. Just, you know, you see that sort of coming home to roost a little bit. I think it also raises a bigger question that many Americans are increasingly asking, which is why do we have so many bases and troops in that part of the world and elsewhere anyway, as there is a shift in the domestic mm. appetite back home towards non-interventionalism and focusing more on the problems at home instead of being all over the world. I think these kinds of things where we've got our troops as sitting ducks in um, some of the worst places, corners of the world is something that I think uh, my fellow Americans are certainly asking a lot more about.